Hey there, this video is part two from when I went to see Brianna at Prestige Hair Studios back in early November. If you haven't seen part one yet, it's gonna be the whole shampoo process along with the consultation, of course, and you're gonna wanna watch that. We have great conversation. I shared a lot of that conversation in that video. So of course, in this video, she's just conditioning my hair and we're starting to get those questions answered. Back a few months ago, I asked you all if you had any questions for Brianna when I was going to go see her and you guys had a slew of questions. Those questions are starting to be answered in this video, but you gotta stay tuned for part three because that's when all of the questions will for sure be answered. So I hope you enjoy and I hope this helps. Oh, what are you using now? I am following up with the Olaplex 5 conditioner okay. afterwards. I more so did that. I was using, you know, everything in the Olaplex line since we're doing the treatment. But the only one I substituted was not the four because, like I said, I just, you don't need that level of cleansing and also, like, it just wasn't good. I'm sorry, I don't yeah, like, I don't like the four either. <laughs> I don't like it. So you just needed something to rinse. Yeah. Here, Brianna is just using the Olaplex number five conditioner and working that in my hair. Now, because we did do a chelating treatment that she mentions I really didn't need, but I brought it to her, I wanted to give it a try, and she said, hey, you do your hair, you take care of your hair really well, I'll do this, we'll try it out. And it was a little too much cleansing, and I didn't really need all that, is basically what she said. So she went and picked up the Olaplex 4-in-1 hair mask and decided to put that on top of the number five, and just really deep conditioned my hair really well, worked it in, added water, and so. Yeah, that's what she's doing now. What brand of hooded dryers do you recommend? Yeah. Or a specific style? Or... Yeah. Style of hooded dryer, I like the, um, for if you're doing an at home one, there's like an egg shape. Mm -hmm. I think it's the one I usually put you under. Yeah. That one I feel like works better because it actually can get the back of the egg. Yeah. The circular ones, especially the more hair you have, it's just going to cover the top. Like even the dryer that I usually put, the Ram one that I put in, the Collins, mm -hmm. that one is good if you're not if you're not expecting like a huge dry time. Yeah. But if you were soaking wet and I stuck you under there, like your ends were going to still be wet. Like the top of your hair would be hot. Yeah. You'd be like, yeah, it's so <laughs> stupid. And I'd be like, oh, you're right. Um, that's challenging because my absolute favorite, I have not even bought it yet. Yeah, I remember last time I was like, yeah. what's your favorite? And you're like, I ain't got it yet. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't even, I haven't even bought it into, like, you probably don't want to buy it for your house. Like, <laughs> I mean, anyway, you can buy it for your house. It's open, but it's just like, like, that is an expensive dryer. Yeah. But I, I like the egg shape as well. I had one that I got from Sally Beauty that was that half shape and I'm like what's the point of me sitting under this dryer I might as well diffuse my hair at this point what was the brand of the one you liked though it's still Collins but I'm trying to it's like Vicro or something I gotta look back at what you said still Collins oh it's Collins oh it's, Collins yeah. oh it's still yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Like the other ones I have are Collins too, but it's just like a different gray, different shade of dryer. It dries very quickly. It gets all the sides. Like okay. now for longer hair, it's still challenging because I'm like, okay, now the hair is hanging outside the dryer. So yeah. what you really need, that's why I like leg shape because I'm like, it gets length and it gets, you know, it's just roundness. Mm -hmm. Is this still the number five? No, this is Serenity Smoothing Cream. I'm just sectioning your hair off, so when we get there, we can just blow it dry. Oh, okay. Cool. Get your hair trimmed. And we just use number five to condition, right? Correct. Yes. Oh, well, I did grab, um, because number five, I feel like was not, we cleansed your hair so much, it was yeah. just not, like, enough. So I walked over, I guess I didn't, like, show it in camera, but I grabbed the four and one. Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought I smelled it, but I was like, yeah. maybe it's just no, the number five. Yeah, I grabbed four and one, and I just put them. And like nice. Okay, I love that stuff. Oh my I was like, cause five. I mean, it was conditioned, but I was like, it's not enough mm -hmm. because we honestly we clarified with the chelating, and then I shampooed your hair again. Like it was just a <laughs> yeah. lot of cleansing for somebody who doesn't need a lot of cleansing. <laughs> but that's okay. That's all right. We live and we live. 
interesting. Yeah. yeah. So Shelly V, um, who is actually I love Shelly. I love her too. I love she, she is my favorite. I love that woman. So she um, asked the question. She said, "I'd love her thoughts on using products with oils and butters formulated in them high up in the ingredient list. Does she feel our hair needs them or not really?" Also, what are her thoughts on how effectively, we'll start with the first one. Yeah. Does she feel our hair needs them or not really? Okay, so let me start with saying this. Yes, your scalp does produce its own natural hair, natural oils. So mm -hmm. that's great, you know, but obviously we know that curly hair, it doesn't reach all the way down to the ends. Yeah. Um, and our hair does have its own natural oil like within the cuticle and the cortex like it's deep within there that you do need to maintain like the structure and the moisture of your hair like you do need that in there now for people who have been washing and washing and washing their hair and i mainly make that statement out of like we wash and go all the time mm -hmm. sometimes if we're just using, if we're not using products that have those natural oils built within them, we can start to feel like our hair is, I think we talked about this, like hydro fatigued, or yeah. like where it's lacking something, or it's not the capability of retaining, like even when we're doing a conditioner, like there's something that it's like, why is it this like, holding on to the like, and yeah, yeah, like what is going on? So I do think it's important to make sure that you are using the proper products that have them in it. And if you are not using the proper products, like you need to go do a treatment and you start incorporating that in your routine. So okay. I'm not a huge fan of just using direct raw oils on the hair, unless maybe you're using it as like an accessory. And when I say accessory, you're like, hey, I have a quick hairspray or like for you when you're describing like, I'm gonna break my cast, I'm gonna put on the ends. I know what I'm doing. I'm addressed why I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. But I also know later on, I'm gonna shampoo this off. Yeah. And it's never a raw oil. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, and yeah. we have to be careful of that. So, products that have it in it, yes, I would say it's needed for the hair because as your hair gets older, like that natural oil that was in it is is being reduced. Yeah, especially high up in the ingredient list. Um, products that are high up in the ingredient list. Um, not. I would say, I when I look at a product, I try not to grab one that has a lot of them yeah. high up in the ingredient list. It's fine if it's like a couple ones and they're quality oils. Yeah. But if I start seeing like a lot of oils high up in the ingredient list, then I know that if I keep using this in my own personal routine at home, that at some point I'm gonna feel build up. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna or I'm gonna have to keep clarifying. And because I know I'm I don't want to clarify every time I want. Like, my lifestyle does not require that. Like, yeah. If yeah. I'm, it, it's just, it would not be good for me. Yeah. It's and not I like don't. I'm swimming in a lake. Yeah. Lake. And I can't really, yeah, like, give an example unless I know that somebody is, like, putting their hair in that, that extreme. Even, like, swimmers. I know they're, like, around chemicals and dry and, like, all of that. But, like, you probably still don't want to be putting a lot of that yeah that like on your hair so I don't know if I'm answering the question no you are like yeah basically what I got from what you said is like yeah you want to use products that are formulated with these things but like super high up in the list probably not so often because you're gonna have to clarify your hair more yeah and because for example Shelly was dealing with dry hair because she was like the BGC method called for you to clarify your hair a lot yeah and so um, using really balancing shampoos that were more stripping and like not and putting I think, conditioning back yeah, in the hair. I think there is a lot a conversation of, as I mentioned earlier, when someone is just going through detoxing their hair, I'm kind of eliminating oils from their routine. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I also kind of am eliminating leave-in conditioners from their routine a little bit too, which is yeah. typically where the oils are hidden, is in our leave-ins. Mm -hmm. So as they get comfortable with the wash and go, and when we start hitting different times of the year, for example, like in Kansas, our dryer months, you know, winter, mm -hmm. 
that's when I start to incorporate it a little bit more. Yeah. Because you need it. You're not having that, the environment, like the humidity from the environment to like help you out. So you have to kind of go in and manually do it or have a product that's going to help you out and do it. Right. So, okay. It's, it's not really a straightforward just answer. It really just depends on what's the condition of your hair. And if you're somebody who you've been mistreated, like misusing oils for a long time, you may be very sensitive to oils at this moment. Mm -hmm. um, whereas me, once again, I use myself an example because I live in the sauna. Like that is complete like desert land all the time. <laughs> so I do need to go in and I use either a leave-in that has something in it so that I can kind of like accommodate for that. Yeah. Now when I'm traveling, I typically, because I like my hair more defined and with a cast so that it lasts, that's the period of time where I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna use a cream with oil in it. Right. Because I'm trying to like make this last. So sometimes, okay. okay, all the time, if you're using all the time, you're gonna find yourself in a point where you're like, I need to clarify, you know? Yeah. Because oils build up on each other. They also can, irritate the scalp if that oil begins to block your sebaceous gland then you're like why is my scalp itchy so you have to be considerate that there's two aspects yeah of like i'm trying to incorporate this for maybe my ends but then also my scalp needs specific care too so why use a product with lots of oils in it and then have to go back and keep clarifying then i'm gonna end up causing an imbalance in something else. So yeah. that's why I slightly avoid it because I want to have more control and I can have more control with products that either have it mildly in there or don't have it in there and I can add them when I need it. Okay. So kind of hard, but yeah. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good like explanation though because I think what, what the BGC method really did for a lot of women was teach them that they need to wash their hair. <laughs> And I think we didn't really know until that got popularized how um, or what products to really use mm -hmm. to go about yeah. it, like on a mass level, the, the audience that they could reach. And I think 30 day detox did play a role in that really well, but my qualm with it is that, yeah, you can just do this like forever and your hair will be fine. No, you know? at some point you don't need it. Yeah, yeah it's it. a detox. Are you going to do a juice detox for the rest of your life? You no, know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, it just doesn't make sense. If you don't need it, then you don't need it. At some point you just need to start maintaining a consistent routine. Yes. And for some people, based on their lifestyle, they need to, there's something always combating the nutrients in their hair. Yeah. You know, so yeah. they need to make that that assessment. You yeah. know, some of that is caused because they're washing very often. Some of that is caused because of how they're styling, you know. Mm -hmm. Some of it's caused because they just don't like the result of their hair, you know, of like what that product, their usual styling products, they're like, no, I want to switch it up. So if you're going to switch it up, just know that you have to make that. Yeah. Accommodation. So. Okay. And second from Shelly, also, what are her thoughts on how to effectively implement co washing or not? Which we kind of talked about. Yeah. Um, effectively implementing it is one, ask yourself, like, does your lifestyle allow you to do that? Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to try to co wash and you're not going to go through and do the proper technique, then just stop. Right. Just like do a good style and let it last. Yeah. And wait until you actually have time to do the proper technique. Um, when you say proper technique, just like regular. There's, um, so you do a great job of even though you're going to like co-wash, you're still going to go through section out your hair and uh, effectively, you know, and some people, if I say you need to do your hair twice a week and one of them is going to be co-washing, they're going to gasp and be like, uh-uh. Like, so if I'm going to do that, I'm going to try, but I'm going to hop in the shower, slap conditioner on it, and get out. And, and I'm like, that sections. was not, yeah. I'm like, that wasn't even worth it. I would prefer you style really good on Monday yeah. and do a good, you know, firm cast and let it last until the next Sunday, you know, and yeah. you can actually take time and wash your hair. Okay. So if you're that person, then perfect, do it. Um, now the people who are starting to get mid look and say, my scalp just feels better. I know my style looks good, but I have come to grips that I just feel better and my hair feels better when I put more water on it. Well, then co-washing is when you start 
incorporating that. Sometimes that's just with conditioner. Sometimes that is with like using very like like co shampoo or like conditioning shampoo. Yeah. Um, so if you're gonna do it and effectively do it, like just make sure you do the proper techniques. Mm -hmm. You're not wanting to wash your hair like super super often. Like you're not gonna if you're talking about washing your hair every day, like I'm gonna say why. You yeah. Know? Like what is in your lifestyle is causing you to do that. Mm -hmm. So I know she was testing out the Anthony Dickey method and she did like co washing um every day for like a week or so every day uh-huh yeah and she only did it for like a week just to test it out and she had been dealing with like chronic dryness yeah it really helped her hair bounce back but i also did that when I, my hair was dry with the mousse but remember i was like after that week my hair was good yeah so why, why would i continue to do that and also i think with any of these methods or any of these times that we need to assess and fix our hair like you assess the problem, you address it, yeah, and then you got off of it. Like, yeah, and I think that's where a lot of people in the consumer world like start the arguments. Is like that's a different method. It's like you need to learn how to address your hair. Take what you need. Yes. Get what you need, and then go where you need to go. Yes. Like, because if I wash my hair, sometimes I like I'll wash my hair and be like, oh man, like it just didn't feel good. Yeah. And I know I fully detangled it, so if I wash it over time, like you just condition in the next couple of days, like I know it feels good. Yeah, you know because I know what I've done to mistreat the situation. You know, mistreat yeah. my hair. Absolutely. That was really yeah. That was good. Because I think this idea of well, if you're gonna redo your hair, you completely reset your hair. You can shampoo it. You're just adding no. product on top of yeah. your hair and it's not doing anything, it's causing buildup because co-washing causes buildup because there was that phase years ago where people weren't shampooing their hair, they were using co-washes. Yes. And so everything, if you just take something there's always yeah, and do it all the time, it's going to cause, if you drink too much water, you can die. Like, come on, you have to like balance things out. There was a point in our industry where everybody wanted to be clean here. Like they wanted to hear the like, yeah. Like, oh my god, god, yeah. So when we introduced like how conditioned then everybody's like, what is this magic? You know, and now <laughs> we're, then we went through a phase of like everybody, especially in the tight curly community, not wanting to wash their hair. Right. So now we're like, what is this magic? It's shampoo. And like <laughs> and now people have been shampooing, shampooing, and it's like we're some people who've been in it long enough, they're starting to hear that a little bit of like what condition even like you know we're just going back and forth and i really think it just comes down to like no you need to maintain stop jumping from one end of the spectrum to the other and learn how to like maintain and yeah. address what is needed yeah lastly her thoughts on finger detangling versus using a hair tool um I prefer to finger detangle first. Mm -hmm. And if you are somebody who is not finger detangling often, then you might find yourself needing to like have some assistance. <laughs> yeah. Or let me rephrase it this way. If you are not thoroughly finger detangling, because some people just grab large sections and they're like, I ran my fingers through the outer. Don't you know? read me like that. <laughs> but like, and then other people are very like, I think you said it, yes. Yeah. And I think you said it in my, your last video where like, I apply product and then I, I literally go through strand by strand. I know good and well that I touch every single strand on your head. You know? Yeah, yeah. And some people are not like that. So yeah. if you don't finger detangle in that manner, then like, you may do the initial, like, let me assess and grab a, grab a section. Mm -hmm. But then I'm going to have to go back and, like, use an assistant to, like, have the bristles yeah. assess. And now it comes down to, are the bristles, like, touching your hair correctly? Are they yeah. treating your hair correctly? Also, what angle do you find yourself, like, pulling mm -hmm. the bristles in? Because some people are like, oh, I love this brush. While other people are like, I love the other one. And mm -hmm. it's, like, it's what feels most, like ergonomic like in your hand and yeah. comfortable yeah because we can have an argument all day about like 
And like I like I can as a professional in the direction I'm standing in, the position I'm standing in, I could probably make any brush work, you know. Mm -hmm. But when someone's in the shower, like that's a whole nother yeah. angle that you're having to reach up so soft bristles versus hard bristles. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that one's that's I always tell people they need to first learn how to finger detangle because you need to learn not to be scared to touch your hair. Yeah. And a uh, brush does not know if there's a knot in that area. So you need to feel for it. Otherwise, you're going to end up using, relying on a brush or a comb and you're going to be ripping, breaking pieces off, you know, unknowingly. So if yeah. you can touch your hair and assess and feel your surface texture, then perfect. I know for a fact that a lot of my issues come from my impatience with finger detangling. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because, like, I. I stand in the shower and I don't want a finger to tangle standing yeah. in the shower. Like, <laughs> I don't want to do it. And it's as simple as that. It's not that, like, if I was outside of the shower, sure. But I don't want to deep condition or condition my hair outside of the shower. Like, I need the water. You know, like, it's just, I have to work on my patience. Mm -hmm. And I talk about that too. I'm like, look, I know every video I'm like, I need to learn how to finger to tangle because I know I'm raking through some pieces of my hair. and causing unnecessary like breakage in some areas but well, you also have a good brush that helps you because like if you think about your shedding you don't have a lot you need something that's going to glide yeah and you get away with it now i i'm still guess be patient learn that part <laughs> yeah i'm not denouncing that but you do there's a difference in taking all of these small sections yeah and breaking through it than trying to take a large section sure. so just to give yourself a little bit of grace because at the end of the day, like when I look at the shedding that you're showing in your videos, like it's yeah. not terrible, you know? Yeah, it's an average amount of shedding, but yeah. in that shedding, there are some broken pieces that don't need to be yeah. there. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I'm always just like, get better. Yeah, yeah, I always get better. But I'm glad, I'm glad you answered that one because that's just been a, and I, that goes back to the, the types of shampoos I'm using. Why am I struggling to detangle so much? Maybe because my hair feels completely stripped every time I condition my hair because I'm over shampooing my hair. Anyway, so those are all of Shelly's questions. What do amino acid-based products do and how do they help natural hair? Let's walk back to the, to the, um, Sorry, the chair, and then I'll answer that one. Oh, okay, but cool. I was like, <laughs> why can I not think of and that is the end of this video. I know you guys, she'll answer that question first thing in the next video. So stay tuned for the final part, part three of my salon visit, my last salon visit of 2023 to see Brianna. I will see y'all there. Thank you so much.